So, Daring Don't is an interesting episode to be certain, and the opinions on it have been quite divisive. The naysayers say that nothing in the episode made sense whatsoever, and my review went into detail about how these leaps in logic were nothing more than piddling little hops. It's a fridge logic sandwich type of episode, kind of like Magical Mystery Cure. The first time you watch it, you enjoy it. The second time, you notice all the plot holes. And the third time, you realize how much sense everything actually makes. Apparently, I didn't go into all the plot holes of the episode, mostly because I didn't think that they were big enough to address. I would like to let Sleeping Dogs lie, so I'll finish this off before we get our new episode. What if Celestia does know about Daring Do's exploits, as alluded to by Dave Polsky's tweets? Whether Celestia knows or doesn't know about George, he's still a small potatoes villain who hasn't succeeded in what he wanted to do. Remember that Trixie did succeed in what she wanted to do, and she was dealt with before Celestia needed to intervene. What if Daring Do has more enemies than George? The point still stands that Daring Do always wins. Any villain she fought would have failed. When the characters in A.K. Yearling's book line up to real ponies? She probably used false names for them. Why did no one notice that Twilight was an alicorn? Besides the entire episode being in the heat of the moment, the same reason that you didn't notice the eye color of the guy who served your coffee this morning. If he had green eyes, you didn't notice, despite it being a rare eye color. It's realistically something that no one would notice. Why didn't Daring destroy the ring in the first place? Her plan was to destroy the temple. Daring flat out said that that was her plan. If we can remove the giant ring at the bottom, the whole fortress will collapse! Was this your plan? I had to find a way to get into the fortress. Also notice, the ring that she had at the beginning was the smallest ring. The one she destroyed at the end was the biggest one. Twilight actually did tell us how George's plan would give the world sweltering heat. True, but in book four, she defeated Awazotl and secured control of the Amulet of Atonement, dispelling the dark magic of the Quetzalcoatl Empress, and thus protecting the basin with the Radiant Shield of Razdan. Yeah, this was an oversight on my part. George needed the rings to destroy an enchantment. The nerd battle between Rainbow and Twilight actually did tell us some minor details. I was just loving the fact that they were having a nerd battle a little too much. And yeah, Daring wanting to destroy George's temple was also revealed there. You used headcanon to justify the plot holes in this episode. No. One of the most important words that a critic could use is could. The things that I suggested could have happened, and therefore there is reasonable doubt, so to speak, as to the impossibility or implausibility of the episode. The question becomes, are the things that I proposed unlikely? That's up for each individual user to come up with. I mean, why doesn't Celestia do anything as a plot hole in every episode? Storm of the Century, Dragon Shy, Sonic Rainboom, Over a Barrel, Too Many Pinkie Pies. Celestia only gets involved if the situation is too harsh for common ponies to deal with, like in Lesson Zero. And in an environment when a large segment of the population could do magic and another large segment of the population can fly, I'm surprised that there aren't more adventurers. I mean, someone's got to keep the shops like the one seen in Magic Duel afloat. Rainbow Dash was still fangirling more than normal. She had built up a resistance to fangirling around the Wonderbolts, but those defenses are pierced when something suddenly spectacular happens. How would you react if your favorite literary character suddenly appeared behind you? Hope he's not a serial killer. Why couldn't this episode involve Spitfire instead of Daring Do? Because then Rainbow's fangirling would have been out of character. Besides, we already had an episode like that. It was called Wonderbolts Academy. I came to the conclusion that there was no evidence that Daring Do couldn't have been real. Any evidence to the contrary is just as speculative as evidence to it before this episode. It was merely assumption that she was not a real character. People proposed questions, and thus I proposed answers. The answers were heavily based on logic and based on things we've seen. Wouldn't ponies know about Daring Do's exploits? Shouldn't the Canterlot elite have known Twilight, student of the princess and Sweden elite? And where was her brother during her party in the castle in which he worked? Is Sweet in the Lead any less of an episode due to that fact? Yeah, there's an off chance that someone will answer yes to that question, but it's a pretty common opinion that Sweet in the Lead is one of the best episodes of the show. It's not like I'm saying that no one should care about Twilight being an alicorn because no one cared about Mare-Duel being an alicorn. Remember what I said in my Is Friendship is Magic Going Through Seasonal Rot video? If you hit anything hard enough with a hammer, it'll break. I, personally, can do a negative review of Hurricane Fluttershy if I wanted to. There's enough material for me to do so. And now, one criticism defending the episode lodged at my review. Daring Do may have written in the books in order to keep her life a secret, therefore making everyone think that her exploits are fictional. Hey, you guys are good at this. I was referring more to the fact of how the episode is written. I mean, that's a situation where the episode owes us an explanation. It could definitely have been justified, but it kind of made me take a sideways glance. I guess that poses an interesting question. What am I willing to justify? The simple, no-nonsense answer. Things that don't have logical or physical evidence against them. Daring to keeping her life a secret, yet writing her life in a book, is logical evidence against that quote. There is no physical evidence that her plan was to make ponies think that her life was fictional. All it would have taken was like a sarcastic quip from Rainbow. There was no physical evidence that Daring Do couldn't have been a real pony, and no logical evidence against it either. Yeah, I know that that explanation was confusing at best. Like I said, it was more of the fact that it was just an awkward moment of the episode. 